secret of secrets in the Pentagon is uh, the Sumerian gods are returning. And that's... They have penciled in a date for June 2023. Hang on, that's past. Oh, well, we'll make up another date for them to come back. And when they do come to see us, what are they going to do? Have a cup of tea, you know, sit down, play some games? Uh, no. So even if they did come back, we wouldn't know about it. And they're not coming back to take over the planet because they left us with the planet. That's why they, uh, the ancient texts say that they let us inherit the planet. So they're not going to come back now. And even though whistleblowers have said they've been dealing with our military for a long time anyway. So if you're going to listen to this kind of stuff, then don't bother following me because I give evidence. Uh, but if you want to follow evidence, then follow me. Petrified giant trees. So this video here that I'm showing you is done by someone else that's collated images together that they believe were giant miles high petrified trees. And the general thing is that it's sort of round with a flat top. Now I've been doing my own research and what I found is look, this, even though these are part of the same rock formation, we could say that these were petrified trees because uh, they're kind of roundish. Oh, look at this one, everybody. This has to be a giant tree because it's round. So we'll add that to that list that that person's done. You get where I'm going in a sec. Uh, this one's not round, so we won't bother adding that. We'll only select the ones that's round. Now, this would have been perfect as a tree, but it's not really round like a tree. So we won't add that. In other words, we're going to select the ones that look round, even though uh, these could have been trees because they match the same ground. Um, they wouldn't be petrified giant trees, so no, we won't add that. You see what I'm saying here? We won't add these because they've not got a flat top. We're going to be very selective on the ones that we say are petrified giant trees. This one, no, I probably wouldn't add that. Uh, oh, this one, oh, but it goes off at an angle, and no, that wouldn't be a tree. Even though it's the same style as the ones that are shown that's round, these ones... Uh, match the same description and everything else as the round ones but they show the round ones as petrified trees but they don't show these elongated weird shaped ones because obviously that wouldn't match their narrative of giant petrified trees um, and this one here well that would have been a tree that was cut down slightly because this is a flat top and so we could use this one as a tree and pretend this is a tree but these extra bits well we'll just pretend this is bark that petrified from another tree so you get what I'm saying. They they basically select what they want. So that would have been a perfect tree if it was round, but of course it's not. So they would have had that picture as a petrified tree, but they won't use that one because it goes off at an angle and that one was long. So you get my point. So in other words, there is rock formations out there that have all different shapes and sizes and the ones that seem to be of uh, that give the appearance of a cut-down tree are the ones that they use as a cut-down giant tree. The Bermuda Triangle is not a fixed and precisely defined area, so the distance from specific points within the triangle may vary slightly. The wreck of Cotopaxi lies 35 miles, 65 kilometers, 40 miles, off St. Augustine, Florida. She was discovered in the 1980s, but could not be identified and subsequently dubbed the Bear Wreck, until the claim by Michael Barnett, which I struggle with his evidence. If it's weather that causes ships and planes to go missing, and our climate is getting worse, then logically we should have more missing planes and ships recently. The last missing plane or ship was in the 1990s. In the 1990s, there were incidents involving missing aircraft and ships in the general vicinity of the Bermuda Triangle. But none of these incidents have been definitively linked to any mysterious or paranormal causes by mainstream. Most of these cases were thoroughly investigated and attributed to known factors such as bad weather, human error, or technical problems. But because they couldn't find the wreckage, they have just assumed that it was bad weather, human error, etc. Here are a few incidents that occurred in the 1990s. 1995. Flying Tiger Line. Flight 66. A Lockheed L-1011 disappeared over the western Atlantic Ocean. Despite extensive search efforts, the wreckage was not found. The cause of the disappearance remains unknown, but it's important to note that severe weather conditions were reported in the area at the time. American International Airways Flight 808, 1990. This cargo plane, a Douglas DC-8, disappeared while flying from Miami to Asuncion, Paraguay. The wreckage was never found, but the disappearance was attributed to bad weather and icing conditions. Independence Day Flight 91, 1996. 
This incident is often mentioned in discussions about the Bermuda Triangle, but it's worth noting that it's a fictional event from the movie Independence Day, released in 1996. It's not a real incident, but it contributed to the Bermuda Triangle mythos in popular culture. Thousands of planes and ships pass through the area each year without incident. Modern navigation technology, improved weather forecasting, and stringent safety protocols have significantly reduced the likelihood of accidents in this region, as well as in other parts of the world. As a result, the Bermuda Triangle does not pose any specific or unique risks to maritime or aviation traffic. So why haven't we had any recent planes or ships go missing? The weather is getting worse. I would say it's because we have put trackers around the Bermuda Triangle to make sure we can keep an eye on everything going through it. Modern maritime and aviation industries extensively use GPS, Global Positioning System, and other advanced tracking technologies to monitor ships and planes, including those that travel through the area commonly referred to as the Bermuda Triangle. These technologies help ensure the safety and security of maritime and aviation activities worldwide. To me, it seems like an intelligence is at work. Since the trackers have been placed, nothing has gone missing, when really, they should have increased. My gut feeling as Sumerian gods and anarchy are coming back. Now, a person has sent me this, an incredible person, and basically this is the entrance to a tomb. Um, obviously, I can't quite work out what the, the image here is, but um, the person has basically said that inside is... There's like a sarcophagus, but it's not a sarcophagus. It is a granite box, and there was a skeleton inside, and it was giant. It was about eight foot tall. They think it's female. Anyway, the reason why they're, the Anunnaki are coming back is because on the breastplate of the woman, the, the skeleton, it said that if you believe me with no evidence, then you're just silly because... This isn't real, this is just me making it up. The reason why I've done this is because so many videos out there that don't show evidence get liked and shared all over the place, way more than my ones with evidence. So I thought, well, I'll just lie like they do. What you are witnessing is an extraordinary recording of a UFO landing in Area 51. And if you believe that TikTok managed to get hold of a UFO landing at Area 51, even though the UFO does look CGI, and in fact, so does the terrain. And if you actually look at the satellite aerial images of area 51 you'll see it's actually not as sparse as what the image you just watched was but if you believe you know videos like that um you know my channel's not for you but if you want evidence my channel is the place to come <laughs> cheers <laughs> Why do I bother? Yet another video where people make up crap and people share it and like it and Christ knows what. Uh, yeah, so no, the Anunnaki's home planet is due between 300 and 900 years. That's going by the evidence of Shah's, not by someone knocking up a video on TikTok. So uh, if you actually want the real evidence, follow me instead of watching videos like that and then sharing those ones and the ones where I give evidence, you just all ignore. It's crazy. If you took that small crystal, don't forget, it's live. There's energy moving there. It's matter just wrapped together and movement there. Now, if you took a piece of uh, copper wire, fine copper wire, and you wrapped so many coils around it, leaving one end loose, and then wrapped it with some mica, and then wrapped the rest of the coil around it, and leave the two wires, one outside the mica and one inside the mica, now you have a little motor. And if you, it won't work the motor as it is. It, if you put it in a vice or something, to squeeze it at the center, then the two wires will make a little motor run. It's what you call piezoelectricity. Now, in the case of this, supposing I put that up into a pyramid or a bigger crystal, then this is feeding that more energy and it's continuous. Now, as you squeeze this to make it work, energy comes out and as you release it it comes back in again it goes <laughs> it'll breathe for you you'll never squeeze it empty but as you release the pressure so it fills itself again immediately reaches balance it has to stay in balance and so you have a little motor there that's one thing you can use your crystal for now if you can imagine the 30-foot pyramid that I have 
knowing that it contained energy and it's free flowing, it's always coming in and it's man is non-stop. I said, well, why can't I harness this? Little crystal will do it. Why can't I harness a pyramid? I made myself two coils. One was uh, just a small one like this. And it was electric coil, counterclockwise. And I hung that in the top of the pyramid. But before I did that, it was, it was stove wire. And there's about eight strands of copper wire and stove wire. And I undid them and made them into a lot of fingers like this, spread them out, something like an antenna. And this end here, I just hung it up, fastened it up onto the beams, and that was right in the peak. Now I went downstairs and I had a square piece of, a spare a piece of plywood, quarter ply, and I made uh, a magnetic coil with old antenna wire. It was double wire. And I put one end straight through into the earth, and so looking at it like this, uh, it stuck through there, and my coil is on here like that. And the other end I left standing up to connect. One's into the earth. Now, all this wire here uh, is only quarter ply, and I used two inch staples. The staples went straight through the ply and gave me a better ground. This was also, this was also ground in the center. Now, there are many things that have happened to me in my time that I can't really explain. There are many things as I have known, but don't know how I know. And this is one instance where this happened to me. I knew I had to connect these two together with some natural wool, sheep's wool. Nylon was not what I wanted. And so uh, I, ha I got hold of some uh, ordinary wool and I measured it out. I up the stairs, the stairs go right to the top. I measured it out so it hung from here to within or oh, six inches of the floor. Plenty to fasten to that and to fasten to this. Now I stood on some, on some steps up there and fastened that to there, I just wrapped around, tied it around. Simple, nothing clever about it, just fastened it to this copper wire. And I hung this down through the steps, through the stairway, until it was hanging down, but it wasn't touching the floor. I went downstairs to connect this to that. And as I caught hold of that, it threw me 20 feet across the floor. I'm 180 pounds. And it picked me up and threw me 20 feet across the floor. I got no skin on this elbow here and all down my leg here. And I lay there for about five minutes at least, wondering what happened to me. All I had done was touched a piece of wool. Now, this wool had gone through it wasn't even connected to this. It had gone through my uh, cube root of the pyramid, which was about here, and up to the point, the second magnitude there, and that part was connected. And when I touched that, I grounded the whole damn thing, and it threw me 20 feet across the floor. I didn't know what had happened to me, and uh, the result of it was I took the whole thing to pieces, I still have the parts. You can have them if you want them. And uh, I realized that I was falling around as something I didn't really understand. It taught me a lesson. But it also meant that I could stand here and tell you, don't fool around with these crystals until you know what you're doing. written explaining how God created El, Yahweh, Asherah, and other gods and gods. This lady was asked whether or not there's any books how God created the other gods and goddesses. She goes on to talk about a particular book. Now, I would suggest, if you're interested in this, to go and look at the Sumerian tablets that literally predate the Bible, that the Bible copied from, and actually has the Anunnaki, which were, their race name was God, just like we're humans, and they had a planet that's in our orbit of our solar system which is written in a tablet in the British Museum called the Enuma Elish and these gods were all together at the same time they came down and they genetically modified a hominid to create the first homo sapien again all written in ancient tablets feel free to follow 
and you'll see the actual evidence that I always give as opposed to just reading out books, etc. Always evidence. I need your help, guys. There's a copper mine in Wales that's over five miles long, and when you actually look at the pathway, it's just big enough barely for a person, and it bends and turns, which is illogical for someone trying to take out the uh, copper that they was digging for. So what I'm trying to say, bearing in mind that's five miles long, is if that's your entrance to the cave or to your tunnel, why not cut wider? Now, I know people will say, well, it's for stability of the mine, but it's ridiculous to keep going for five miles, just digging any angle you want, <laughs> going round any, any which way, when clearly you must have found the, the copper to start with. Otherwise, you wouldn't just go for five miles hoping to find it. You must have found some and took some out. So as soon as you find a place where there's copper, dig. Why, why don't they make it wider so that two people and three people can all start working? Any ideas? A study by HAL Open Science looked into the pineal gland and radio frequencies because the pineal gland has been found to have new form of biomineralization. It consists of small crystals that are less than 20 microns in length and that are completely distinct from the often observed mulberry-type hydroxyapatite concretions. These crystals could be the key to transmitting and receiving, like a walkie-talkie, Hal Open Science stated in a peer-reviewed paper. They focused on the physiological effect of microcrystals in pinealocyte cell culture under radio frequency electromagnetic fields, RF, EMF. Due to their piezoelectric nature, these pineal microcrystals could potentially interact with the electrical component of electromagnetic fields, especially in the frequency range of 500 mHz to 2.5 GHz, which includes frequencies used by various wireless technologies like GSM, DCS, UMTS, and Bluetooth. The authors propose that these crystals could be sensitive to certain radio frequencies, and their responsiveness might be detectable using methods such as MEMS, precision instruments, micro-tweezers, or by correlating electro-optic and piezoelectric properties with optical microscopy. I'll break that down. These pineal microcrystals could potentially interact with electromagnetic fields. It means the pineal gland could receive your pineal gland's output. Both are electromagnetic fields, thus telepathy. I'm not sure what to say now. Science appears to agree that it's possible to receive and transmit energy. A thought is energy. Nearly all the alien races I've heard about communicate using telepathy, even Bigfoot. But the only one... The Egyptian government recently released evidence that the pyramids were built by aliens. The video goes on to say that an archaeologist found what he thought was originally a toy, but he took it away. Long story short, it turns out to be an alien device, which is a load of baloney, simply because not, I, ha I have a friend that actually got married in the Great Pyramid. Do you know how many people have been in the Great Pyramid? A lot. There's even a website that actually has LiDAR scans of it. Do you think they're not noticed some sort of metal or metallic object as they do these scans and yet people share this video not my one but the other one the full video of that I'm going oh wow look it's believable because the people instead of oh, I get frustrated only because I give evidence for my videos whereas those videos don't and they get more views etc than mine it's just ridiculous how easy people are led to believe things the Anunnaki were real back in them days now here is a lecture by the Morgan Library regarding a cylinder seal to do with Ishtar, who was also Inanna, um, Akkadian Ishtar, Inanna was Sumerian name for the same person. Listen to this, this gentleman down here. On the screen at the right is a fragment of a mold and its impression is at the left. Though not a seal, it is clearly the work of a most accomplished seal carver. Even though executed on a small scale, it is less than five inches high the fragmentary mold demonstrates another aspect of the complex iconography developed by the Akkadian artists for expressing not a mythological setting for a god, but a real setting for an actual living god. Okay, I hope you heard that, a living god. So can we end with everything? These were gods, these were alive, these, this, the race name was gods, that's what we call the Anunnaki really need someone that knows the bible to answer these questions for me please so in young's literal translation it says here and that there is no other god except one for even if there 
are those called gods, in other words, there are, whether in heaven, whether upon earth, as there are gods many and many lords and lords many. So basically, we know heaven is space because it says so in Deuteronomy. And they are listed up their iron eyes unto heaven when we see the sun, stars and moon. And of course, we can see the sun, stars and moon. Everybody, we can see heaven, but we can't. We can see space. So therefore, heaven is space. So when you read this now, plural gods and not the one, they are in heaven. So basically saying whether these gods are in heaven or on earth, how can they be in heaven unless it's a spaceship? Anyway, uh, another part which confuses me, if you're still with me, the gods having become like men did come down to us. Now they would have come down from where? Plural. Gods come down from heaven, which must be space. Now this, I found this is quite interesting. This is the ancient tablets that the Bible copied from. These are Sumerian, Arcadian, Assyrian, etc. And yes, the Bible did copy from them because this uh, predates the Bible and it's got the same sort of stories in it. But what's interesting is there's gods in here. Uh, one of the main gods here is Enki. He's the one that created us, our father who are in heaven. And we know that because it literally says so here. <laughs> uh, he is also called the Great Lord. Uh, Enki the Great Lord. This is again in the oldest translation. So when it said here about and many lords this the bible's confusing me because obviously we've got older texts that's talking about an anunnaki race called gods that's their race name gods uh and of course um enki was actually the one that told noah to build an ark and that's all in the british uh, museum in these tablets so i'm um, again asking any religious person, and no one will bother replying because they can't, obviously, and hath said of hosts, God of Israel, that's single, yeah, one God. Obviously, the, the Almighty God wouldn't be God of Israel because he would be God of everything. That's a bit of a come down. But um, lo, I am seeking after Amon of No, and after Pharaoh, after Egypt, and after her gods, and after her kings. Now, if, if religious people are going to say to me, no, that should really be God then should that be single as well? Because they can certainly write the word God without needing to add an S on it, as you can clearly see there. So if you're going to say, oh, no, it's the Holy Trinity, all this stuff that came two to three hundred years later to try and get round the fact that it says plural, uh, what about the kings? Should that then say, and her king? Why, why, why change that one? because it suits your narrative of, of a single God, when clearly there's over 200 times it mentions gods in the Bible, plural, 200 times, but of course, lest we not forget that. So can anyone give me any reason why it's talking about the same things that's in the ancient Sumerian texts uh, as plural, but I keep getting told by people that, no, there's only one God and he's going to love me forever and you know repent and all this kind of thing. But but why why does people not acknowledge the the plural why why, and please don't say it's the Trinity as I say that was added later to try and explain away the gods. Um, please reply please if you don't it kind of means that you have no knowledge really of what's going on and I'm kind of right with the fact that they are tablets from the Anunnaki which was the Sumerian and Assyrian etc and that their race name was gods and that they do have spaceships in heaven as written in the book of Enoch if you actually bother reading it as well as other tablets in fact um, but yeah please answer it one one person please with evidence don't, don't don't just say I'm wrong please don't say I'm wrong just give me evidence I've shown you evidence here give me evidence that's all I ever asked absolutely astonishes me how people can post stuff without any knowledge of anything so for example i get up someone saying that the ajiji were less intelligent than the anunnaki they don't even know what they're talking about because the ajiji were actually just a young anunnaki and i've proved that over and over and uh, i offer to show them proof and of course they don't bother watching it in fact they come back and change the subject so i'm just saying in life it's probably better to just to Admit you don't know something. Listen to someone that knows what they're talking about or don't say anything. Don't make up stuff that you really don't know in your heart that's true because someone like me will ask for the evidence and of course those people then just back away or you know, or try and attack me with a different angle. 
Um, so yeah, evidence helps in these situations. <laughs> Feel free to follow. I don't. I won't lie to you guys. Wouldn't it be amazing if God was actually in the same place that the Anunnaki were? Well, have a listen to this. Whoa, there are some loaded symbols in there, are there not? And there's probably some resonance for you uh, because the Genesis story comes out of Mesopotamia. There is no doubt of this. Um, so that is, you can read that yourself. Uh, so why that's amazing is because obviously God ended up being in Mesopotamia, which is here, that's Euphrates and Tigris. Now, if we have a look here at the ancient Sumerian text, we'll see that Father Enki, yes, he's our father who art in space, heaven with space, had lifted his eyes across the Euphrates. So we know they were in Mesopotamia. So it's, is it a coincidence that the almighty God that deals with Genesis was actually exactly the same place as the Anunnaki, that their race name is also called gods, uh, just like we're human? Pyramids were built for time travel. It says so here in the Express. Time travel, shock, speed of light, proof of aliens, etc. Now also here on the quartz site, it says that physics time travel isn't just possible. That's because the Anunnaki put quartz, as well as other crystals, inside the pyramid for a time travel device. Now we know that because we can see in Abydos the carvings of a helicopter, etc. And a plane. And a plane. Now who else has seen that? Yes, Leonardo da Vinci did visit uh, Egypt, and that's why he had the time travel knowledge to build and design a helicopter. Sorry guys, I lied to you. I'll explain in a second why. So this gentleman here has a video, but it's not his account that it's being shown on. Someone else's. And when you watch this video, you'll when see... When you're reading these stone tablets, you're looking backwards in time, and you're getting as close as... So basically, it really doesn't say anything. Whereas the fake video that I'd done, that I lied to you guys on, which was the time travel video, which was sensational and actually almost has a bit of evidence, you'd think would get more views and more followers, etc. But it doesn't. So this this video here with uh, Billy on got 117 likes, got 14 shares, um, and 988 hearts in roughly the same time that mine got one share nine favorites and only 77 hearts so it does appear that it looks like i have to show my face that is me sorry now hopefully i might get more followers hi this is a message for billy carson so i keep getting lots of people sending me videos of yours where you just do the sound bites and you don't actually show evidence i show evidence and a lot of the stuff you say, I can't find. So, for example, one video you said that the Anunnaki called themselves blackface. I can't find that evidence. Uh, there's so many videos, pretty much most videos you do, I can't find the evidence for. So I was just wondering, is it at all possible in the future, instead of just doing these sound bites, could people believe you when you just do the sound bites? I could do sound bites all day long um, and say stuff that I can't prove. So I'm just thinking to sort of stop people thinking that you're either telling the truth or people like me saying, hang on a minute, I can't find the evidence. Could you just maybe in future, instead of just doing the sound bites, actually show the evidence like I kind of do on my videos? That way it will clear up any you know problems because I'm interested in what you're saying, obviously, but I can't find the evidence. Thanks. So this person's replied to a video that I done asked in Billy if he wouldn't mind showing evidence instead of just sort of sound bites, instead of just standing at a podium and talking. Um, so this person thinks that I don't like Billy because I obviously called him out and asked for evidence. And this person said that uh, on Billy's website, which is forbidden uh, knowledge, uh, the he Billy shows evidence. So I've gone through his website, and the closest I can get to is is this bit here, where it's a for forbidden knowledge TV. So you click on that, and then there's loads of different videos, including cooking ones and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of them don't don't appear to be Billy's either. They seem to be someone else's, other people's. But anyway, so here's one that's Billy's. I'm just going to press play. Uh, this is why they would bury themselves in tombs and with all their riches. Now, anybody with any kind of common sense knows that these riches are not wrapped in money wrap. So why would the riches go with me to the next round? So he's doing exactly what he does on the, the videos that I point out. He's not actually given the evidence. Do you know what I mean? Built by people in unison, peace and harmony. And what did he do? It's just showing videos uh, and talking. Whereas if you go to my website, and this isn't a plug, I'm just saying, if you go to my website and click on any video, 
Uh, I'll click on this one here. Anunnaki gave us barley. And look. Reading by me, don't worry. Of the translation, so I'm showing evidence. So my video, every single video that I do where there is evidence, I say it. And if there isn't evidence, I say, you know, allegedly or apparently or I believe. So there is no hate there. I, I would love Billy to be on the same page and actually give out the evidence so that people like me don't ask, need to ask for it. That was all it is. Um, because some of the stuff that he said, I found evidence to the contrary. And that's why I'm asking him for his evidence, because I want to learn. And if he's got the evidence, show us. Unfortunately, on his website, you have to pay uh, just to watch his videos by the looks of it. Uh, but he's behind a paywall. Uh, but that's fine. That's his, you know, it's up to, totally up to him. But at least give the evidence if you do have the videos behind a paywall. That's all I'm saying. Were the Anunnaki gods blue? There's some researchers out there, not going to name names, that say that the Anunnaki were blue uh, and black and white because in India the gods are painted blue. That's the assumption, which is a really bad assumption in my opinion. Uh, because in Egypt we've also got yellow people and brown people, we've got white people and so on. Uh, it doesn't mean that they were all of those colours. And now if you actually do the research, you'll find that the blue distinguishes them from mere humans. In other words... Blue represents the sea and sky, which is also uh, in India as well as in Egypt, if you have a listen here. I'll just dangle that out there for another talk sometime. But this is the god Amun, typically shown in human form, but sometimes associated with a ram. He is sky. If he's painted, he's blue. He is the sky. He's hidden. His name Amun means the hidden one. TikTok may have shadow banned me. My views have gone down to 10s and 20s. But that's okay because TikTok doesn't know this secret. I'm actually happy if just one person watches my video. So I win. <laughs> the Enlilites initiate the Second Pyramid War. The triumphant Ninurta clears the Great Pyramid of its machinery. Ninherseg, Enki, and Enlil's half-sister calls for a peace summit. The division of Earth is reconfirmed. Governance over Egypt is passed from the Ra Marduk dynasty to that of Thoth. Heliopolis is constructed as an alternative beacon city. Thoth was warned off Atlantis as Ninurta was going around destroying places that Marduk, Ra, may be hiding and to stop Marduk's foothold on control, as Atlantis Heraklion was the largest port. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth explain he was warned off Atlantis before it was sunk. This matches everything that we need to know about Atlantis. We have the dates matched perfectly, ancient texts agree, and even some of Plato's writing matches. I don't think all of Plato's will ever match. I think he had to fill a book to sell. Adding his own details made sense as no one back then would be able to verify everything in his book. Our father who art in space. Yes, the alien Anunnaki. If you're religious, please move along. You won't want to watch this. So in the Bible, it says God's plural over 200 times. And of course, the Anunnaki race name was God's. Genesis actually happened in Mesopotamia. Guess where the Anunnaki were? Over the whole planet. Yes, they were in Mesopotamia. The first six days, obviously, in the Bible. But we actually have the text where it shows that Enki was here for the first six days and tells everyone to rest on the seventh. Garden of Eden was actually on a spaceship originally with Adam and Eve. Yes, we've got the text for that. They were there for 24 years. Um, creation of man. <laughs> Enki obviously said he did it. This predates the Bible and we do have fused chromosomes. <laughs> Noah. Enki warned Noah the tablets in the British Museum as opposed to God. Enki being one of the Anunnaki. The Great Flood. Noah was saved by Anunnaki. We've got the evidence of that and so on. Hmm... Is there any religious people out there? Please have a word with this person. Someone's really done a number on her. If you re read all her comments, literally she's saying that demons wrote the two moon tablets that in the hopes that in the future, thousands of years later, we could actually translate the Sumerian language, which was really a bit of luck that we managed to do that uh, because of a cave finding... Anyway, long story, but yeah... And of course, uh, demons, the original word for demons was uh, meteorites, just like dragon was a comet. And you can't describe a demon. You can't describe a monster. And that's because there is none. It's, a demon is just a name for something you give to something that you find evil. But this woman is really, really, I pity her. Um, so if there's any religious people, have a chat with her and explain to her that it's not, 
quite the way that someone sold it to her. <laughs> Please, I'm trying to help. Wow, this is interesting. So I did a video saying that a, another video that shows a UFO land in Area 51 is fake. And this person who doesn't follow me has wrote, oh, you're one of the paid off ones, meaning I'm deliberately debunking UFOs. Now, obviously, this person has not watched any of my thousand odd videos, didn't ever see my other documentaries where I prove various things that no one else has ever come up with. Um, and if I'm being paid, it's certainly not going into my bank. And also, I am actually anti-establishment and anti-elites. So they certainly wouldn't want to pay me. So if you let me know who's paying me to give out the amazing information that I do, then um, you know, feel free to write a check or something because I'm not being paid. Yahweh is not who you think. It's not Enlil. Yes, I've done it again. I have now worked out who Yahweh was and I've also worked out who El was. If you don't know who they are, uh, maybe it's a good time to start following me. I'm also the person that's actually done who Jesus' real father was. Uh, 20 minute documentaries on YouTube. You, you can find it on my website. Just go to search at the top bar. There's so many documentaries and things that I've done. Outrohistory.co.uk and search and just go down for who Jesus' is father was. So, uh, the actual documentary on who Yahweh and El are will be on my Patreon page this coming weekend. Uh, so, hopefully you'll all enjoy it. Magnetic field. The plane of inertia is where we get the word planet Earth from. The atom if that's the case, then the Anunnaki who named the planet Kiyokai would have also wrote down about the inertia, etc., for you to be able to work out that that's how we got the name planet Earth. So, could you show me the Sumerian tablets where it says about the inertia, etc., creating the name planet Earth? Because all I know is that the Anunnaki came down and they'd already named all the planets in our solar system. And that's written in ancient texts. So, if you could just give me the evidence for what you said, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Our moon is a spaceship. Or so you may have been told. Now, the reason why people tell you that is because our moon faces one way all the time. And according to scientists, there is no such thing as a planet or a moon that faces one way all the time because it's just theoretically impossible. However, recently, in fact, uh, just last week, astronomers spot an Earth-sized planet with a lava hemisphere. If you go down and carry on reading, the newly spotted planet, sorry, my, I'm terrible at pronunciations, uh, called HD 63433D is tidally locked, meaning there is a day side that always faces its start on a side that is constantly in darkness. So can we end with the moon being a spaceship because of that reason? The moon's hollow because aliens have been mining it out for a long time, and so has the Nazis, and so has the American military. That's why it's hollow beings to mine all of the resources that they needed from planet earth not to mention the reptilians were not very happy this person is saying that the reptilians owned planet earth and that the anunnaki came here to mine for gold part of that's right obviously the reptilians isn't so i'm asking the person that's done the video please stop making up stuff you've not done the research you're just copying other people that's got it badly wrong I'm asking for evidence that the Anunnaki knew reptilians, as you just said, and I'm asking for evidence that the reptilians were upset with the Anunnaki, as you just said. When you realise you can't give me those uh, bits of evidence, because there is none, please just stop, stop, stop putting videos out where people seem to think they know what they're talking about, but don't, because it's, it really is not good for the real researchers out there. The Bronze Book was merged with a Celtic wisdom text called the Coal Book. In his full video, he goes on to say that the text was originally this and then copied, then transcribed, etc., etc. And then in the end, he says, go read the Colburn Bible. Um, to me, that's more like the normal Bible that we have now, where it's a copy of older text. We know that it's got Greek uh, copies from it. It's copied Egyptian, it's copied Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian. So in other words, if I was going to look at anything, I would always go back to the original source, not the copy of the copy of the copy, and then with people's own interpretations added to it. Um, and that generally goes for everything in life. You always go back to the original. Don't bother going with the copies that people's man-made changed. It's just not worth it. 
I appreciate that someone actually replied to my last video, so thank you, Wendy. The problem we've got is I gave an abundance of evidence showing that the Anunnaki were the gods in the Bible. And what you've done is you've just said, no, any gods in the Bible are just lesser gods, but still gods. Mm. So that's kind of, at what point in the Bible does God say, do you know what, I made some lesser gods? Because obviously if there's only one creator, then he decided to make lesser gods. But we do have the text where Enki tells the other 49 Anunnaki to catalogue things for the first six days and then rest on the seventh. So everything that the Bible's got, we've got that predates the Bible in older texts. So I know your narrative is single God, single God, single God, but I'm just asking you, why are you not looking at the older text that actually predates the Bible that the Bible copied from? I don't, I just still can't grasp that. Okay, please show me the evidence of this. I've been researching for 40 years, never come across any evidence of reptilians being on the moon or that the Anunnaki first settled on the moon uh, to look for gold. So if you could show me the evidence, thank you. Heaven and hell are not places. They are mind states. Heal is hell, the root shock. Oh wow, so the Anunnaki, when they told us that heaven was space, because they say that in the heaven you can see the sun, stars and moon, same as the Bible, so if it's not space and it's headspace, then all the people that went into the headspace, such as Ezekiel and Enoch, etc., that went through the firmament, yes, there was only a handful of people that ever mentioned the firmament, why YouTubers end up saying the firmament's a solid dome is beyond me. Come watch my videos, I won't lie to you guys. So anyway, yeah, heaven isn't headspace. <laughs> Otherwise, Anunnaki wouldn't have been writing about their planet being in heaven, which is space. Uh, planet Nibiru, if you're interested, I show evidence of all of this stuff. You know when you say Amen, you're actually praying to Marduk, who was a god of Babylon first, but eventually became the main god. Uh, he was an Anunnaki alien, and the evidence is here in a YouTube video called Jesus Real Father Named by Our True History. This person's replying to a video where I said the moon is not a spaceship. And so it's all about evidence. So we have the Enum Relish in the British Museum, which names all of the planets in our solar system and explains how the moon got here 4.5 billion years ago. And that was written by the Sumerians, which would have been done by the Anunnaki. We also know all the names of the planets because of the Greek gods, which we didn't even know all the planets at that point, and yet the Greek gods seemed to do it, and of course they were the same Anunnaki gods. So that's the evidence to say that the moon were called Lapmu and Kingu, two different names, but same celestial body, was here 4.5 billion years ago. So going back to the supposed tribes that supposedly say there was a time before the moon, uh, hearsay so i know which one i will go with i'll always go with the evidence in it 24 hours in a day two plus four equals six all together that's six 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 so then after six 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 you've got alien and alien equals owl because it's the first letters which actually equals aliens um so your brain could also be brian uh just spelt differently you see so heaven uh it must mean god is inside because i've just done those things and added those together mates and then oh flat earth Flat Earth is interesting because um, there's some squiggles there, so we'll ignore the Flat Earth there. Uh, Anunnaki, obviously, key is Kai, which equals Earth. We all know that, and oh, that means then, obviously, God's inside because um, it is because I'm pointing with a pen. Uh, smart and dumb, that's because God equals that, which means if you believe someone without asking for evidence, then you're a God because you're also smart and you're also dumb. And then we can just scribble. The Puzzling Disappearance of Bobby Dunbar In the sultry summer of 1912, the Dunbar family embarked on a family vacation to Swayze Lake in Louisiana. Little did they know this innocent trip would soon turn into a perplexing enigma that would baffle investigators and captivate the nation. Four-year-old Bobby Dunbar was playing near the lake's edge when he vanished without a trace. Panic set in as the family searched desperately for their young son. The local community rallied initiating a massive search operation that spanned miles of dense forests and murky swamps. Eight months later, in a bizarre twist of fate, a child matching Bobby's description was discovered in the company of a traveling handyman named William Walters. The child, found in Mississippi and now called Bruce Anderson, 
was handed over to the Dunbar family who embraced him as their long-lost son. The case seemed closed, and the community breathed a sigh of relief. However, as years passed, doubts began to surface. In 2004, Bobby Dunbar's granddaughter, Margaret Dunbar Cutright, initiated a genealogical investigation to uncover the truth. What she discovered was both astonishing and confounding. Through DNA analysis and historical records, Margaret unearthed evidence suggesting that the boy raised as Bobby Dunbar might have been, in fact, Bruce Anderson, the son of a poor woman named Julia Anderson. The revelation shook the foundations of the Dunbar family's beliefs, opening a Pandora's box of unanswered questions about Bobby's true fate. The case of Bobby Dunbar remains a haunting mystery, raising unsettling questions about identity, family, and the enigmatic forces that can blur the lines between truth and fiction. David Paulide's research into such inexplicable disappearances illuminates the perplexing nature of human vanishing acts, leaving us to ponder the unfathomable depths of the mysteries that surround us. My personal thoughts on skinwalkers revolve around the concept of interdimensional portals. While I entertain the idea of these portals allowing creatures to move between realms, I find it hard to grasp the notion that an extraterrestrial being would transform into a human from Earth. Space is fake and aliens are alive. A couple of problems with this. If there is no space, could you explain what Halley's Comet does? Please don't say it's in water because it's got a long tower and, as you know, it would also need to be propelled because it goes around every 60-something years and we've been tracing it for over a thousand years. And obviously if you say it's in our inner space, therefore it's still space. If you say it's in our atmosphere, then tell me how I could magically fly around every 60-something years. So that's the first problem which you won't be able to answer. Second one is you say aliens are not real, but and fake but there's people such as Betty and Barney Hill that didn't even know about aliens and they only found out after hypnoregression so they're not the ones that's actually making it sound fake we've got the evidence that the Anunnaki created us in their image fused chromosomes etc so if you wouldn't mind just answering these questions that'd be great thank you very much and for the past 40 years I have been channeling an extraterrestrial entity that we I think it's amazing that the American military haven't uh, taken someone like him, bearing in mind Yuri Geller was actually used by the CIA for five years uh, using his skills. And of course then you've got people like uh, Phil Schneider that saw an alien, described it and then unfortunately was unalived, if you know what I'm saying, by mysterious forces. So when you've got someone that can actually give us information about our past, our future and technologies, etc., I think it's lovely, even though he did research Back in the day, it's amazing that someone that researched this stuff is, ends up being the same person that gets channeled. That's great. But it's amazing the military haven't, you know, nabbed him or done something to him. So thank you, military, for, you know, giving us this person. Did you know that this tablet here in the British Museum held by Ivan Finkel, the head curator of the British Museum, is the tablet that God tells Noah to build the ark? Unfortunately, did you know that it was Enki that's on the tablet, not God? Enki and Anon. Breaking news, archaeologists redate Babylon's Ishtar Gate using Earth's magnetic field. It's not that impressive. However, what is more important to me is here in Ishtar's Gate, uh, as you can see, there is this creature. This creature was Marduk's pet, as you can see in a relief there, and then in a sort of fleshed out version of it. And obviously we don't have that now. So that was Marduk's pet. However, Ishtar had the lion, and Ishtar would be seen most of the time standing on a lion. And here's another relief based off of that. So she always seems to have a foot on a lion, and here again on a lion. Now, you'll never guess who the Indian god Ishtar was. Obviously, Ishtar's Babylonian, Inanna was Sumerian, same person, goddess of love and war. But it was Kali standing on a lion, same pose as well. In the remote mountains of early 20th century Tibet, a mystical order of giant... I'm shocked by the people that liked and shared that video. It's AI, computer-generated AI. ...and trains, they were doing a lot of what looked like cloning with children. And if you look back... I have no idea why people sharing these types of videos and believing and everything else. 
so if you're going to clone someone, certainly back then, you don't have the incubators out on show. You don't invite photographers and uh, press and everyone else to come and have a look and then allow those pictures to be sent out because you're doing something. Cloning would have been totally banned back then, I'm sure. So, you know, just a bit of common sense says, do you really think they're going to show the cloning facility just like that and have photographs taken and printed out and put in newspapers? Just common sense, really, guys, come on. Here's Billy Carson explaining who Yahweh is. Yahweh, which is we know is Enlil in the modern day Bible. Actually, I thought the same thing, but unfortunately I did a deep load of research, and in fact the time frame doesn't even match Enlil. So when you do the amount of research that I've done, you realise it's not Enlil, which was one of the Anunnaki. It is someone different. It's still an Anunnaki. I won't spoil it for you. But if you go to my website, outruehistory.co.uk, I have done a 20-minute documentary, and I mean, if you watch my documentaries... Uh, they are very, very good. Uh, in fact, I'm the guy that told you who Jesus' real father was. I'm the guy that told you where Atlantis was. I'm the, I've done so many things and no one's debunked them because cause I, I use evidence, proper evidence, real hard evidence. So anyway, go to my website, outruhistory.co.uk, type in Bible, whatever you want, Jesus, God, and then scroll down until you find the video that you're after, which will be um, who Yahweh really was. It's under Bible, there we are. As well versed as I am in the ancient Sumerian tablets, there are many that I've not read. And I keep saying to people, I've not seen them. Even though Zachariah Sitchin has mentioned them, I've not actually read the translations directly myself. And that's because certain places like the Library of Congress, the Rothschilds and the Moorhen Collection have managed to get the tablets and translate them. But not all of them has been translated. So, for example, the Moorhen collection here uh, of books is very good because he was allowed after seven years of trying to get to read some of the tablets from the Rothschilds. They allowed him finally. So he's done some books here that's also audio books. Um, so in other words, I'll probably never get to read the original translations because they're owned by people that don't want us to know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that includes the ME tablets as well, which is a shame. Father Bennett, this is for you. Please listen carefully. So although this video here says Father Bennett being nasty to an innocent man, I'm actually talking about something different. <laughs> this is someone else's video that he's replying to. So on one of my lives just now, I had a person say to me that you blocked him because he asked you about the Anunnaki and you said that you don't deal with rubbish basically on youtube so father bennett it's time to call you out i'm afraid so here in the bible this is the young's literal translation if you don't know what that is then you shouldn't be preaching now that i have known that jehovah which was enki by the way is greater than all the gods plural and they call for the people, this is again further down, and they call for the people to to the sacrifices of their gods, plural. You guess where I'm going with this, but keep going, keep coming with me. You, you block that person. I will not block people on my live chats. If I don't know the answer, I will say I don't know the answer. So this is for you. And anyone that knows Father Bennett, send him this video, because it's time that we cut the rubbish and we get straight to the point. And if thou really forget Jehovah, thy God, and hast gone after other gods and served them. Now, people pick and choose what they want from the Bible. They'll say, no, no, it's just one God. I serve the one God. I've seen you, Father Bennett, cry on your live chat saying, I serve the one God. I don't do this for money. Yeah, I've seen you do that. Um, so you're going to pick and choose. So you're going to say, these are not real words but the ones where it says one god is a real word but plural is not then you'll say i'm sure that you'll throw in the old holy trinity however the holy trinity was added 200 to 300 years after the bible was complete to get around the fact that now there's plural gods or there was always plural gods obviously genesis 126 you know what i'm talking about there when they create us in their image now it's a copy. Now, the person that you blocked said, um, do you know about the older texts? 
and you obviously blocked him because you know in your heart you've got 100% faith, haven't you? No, you haven't. The majority that agrees most surviving texts on fragments on the papyrus and orchestra indicate that the Hebrew scribes borrowed from older Egyptian texts. Now, we've actually got Sumerian, Akkadian, etc. texts. So I'm just going to show you some Sumerian texts here with the word gods. This predates the Bible. And do not do not say it doesn't. This predates the Bible. And here we're talking about the senior gods oversaw the work while the minor gods were bearing the toil. So the minor gods were the Ajiji. In the Bible, you'll know them as the sons of God that stole human women. You know the passage. The sons of God saw that the daughters of man was fair. That is the minor gods. So I'm sorry if a lot of the religious people that's listening to this didn't know all of this, but we actually have the evidence. So the Anunnaki is a name that was given to a group of alien beings which were 8 to 12 foot tall, pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. Funny that's where your god comes from, isn't it? <laughs> Same description. But hey, they came here and they basically needed to mine for gold to sprinkle gold at particles in their atmosphere. Now, I know that sounds silly, but we need to do that now with, or, or Bill Gates wants to do that now with chalk particles, so it's not that stupid. So, the Ajiji, which translates, if you go and look it up, you'll see that the word Ajiji translates into a couple of different things, but one of them is the Watchers. Hang on a minute, it's all making sense now. So the Ajiji came down and created a human species. So I'm asking Father Bennett to prove this wrong. Uh, don't worry, I'll get there in a sec. So uh, here it talks about in the tablets Enki and Nimna about them coming up with the idea to create a race here on Earth to do the mining forum. And basically, if you go and search Enki and Nimna, the actual full translation, which is here, just type in Enki and Nimna, says, My mother, the creature, which is us, you planned will really come into existence, impose on him the work of carrying the baskets. This is the first ever language, and they're coming up with things like this. Now, it goes on to show that they actually, look, man's body can either be good or bad. Basically, this is your Bible, everybody. I'm sorry to say this. It is. So, Ivan Finkel, the head curator of the British Museum, has these uh, tablets in the British Museum. And it's basically to do with Noah's Ark, where he reads out the translations that he's translated. He can read it himself. And Noah gets told by Enki to build a boat. In fact, the name on this tablet is Zazudra. Um, and that's what eventually becomes Noah. So Zazudra gets told to build an ark. And it even gives a description of the ark, etc. So the question is to Father Bennett, can you debunk the tablets that the Bible copied from? If you can't, you need to, to say sorry to people. If you can debunk them, please do a video showing evidence, just like I've shown. Don't don't shy away. Do not say BS. Do not block people that's asking you about this video. Show evidence, like I do. Now, there is one more little trick that I can do for you. On YouTube, there's a video called The Lost Book of Our True History. If you look at the title here, it says Proof Anunnaki Were Here, Proof They Were Gods by Our True History, which is me. So if you can show evidence that this evidence is wrong, and I show a lot of evidence, if you can show evidence, then uh, I will delete my video. If you end up showing me passages from the bible which is obviously a copy of the older text and as i say you can go through so if anyone's interested um i go through a lot of the ancient sumerian tablets etc which show you the same things as what the bible does but without the inconsistencies the bible does seem to have 144 plus inconsistencies so if father bennett can watch this and the reason why i'm doing this father bennett i don't normally call out people like this this bad but I'm disgusted the fact that you blocked someone simply because you didn't want to answer it. You did not want to answer it. I spend hours, five hours sometimes, six hours on a live answering every single question out. And I've asked you a question before. I have, Mr. Bennett. I've asked you a question about, do you know about, I've even done a TikTok video so you can go and watch it because I screenshotted it and you ignored me. So now it's time to, to fess up and play the game.
So I await your evidence. Only evidence. Do not come back with anything else other than evidence. I've given you the evidence. I want evidence. The EGG are the working class Anunnaki. Now, they weren't slaves, but they were kind of treated as... If you actually do proper research, you'll find that the EGG were the sons of the Anunnaki. And basically, the Anunnaki's race name was God's. And you'll see that they were the sons of God, as mentioned in the Bible also. So I can show you the evidence of this, if anyone's interested, instead of just believing that they were lower class. Um, I don't know what where Billy was going with that, but basically I can show you the evidence. So if you go to YouTube and just type in proof Anunnaki were here, proof they were gods. And that's under my channel, Outro History. And so you'll watch the evidence where it shows you the Ijiji were the fallen ones, the fallen angels, which were also known as watchers in the sky. And they were sons, not slaves, nothing else other than sons, young and anarchy. Did you know that all blue white people are related? And it's because we're all descended from one person. This person goes on to say that in the past, one person had a mutation and therefore everyone with blue eyes comes from them, from the Black Sea area, which just so happens to be where the Anunnaki were, who were pale-skinned, blue eyes and blonde hair, which is what God looks like, if you, if you want to describe them, because obviously that's their race name, the Anunnaki's were gods. We're humans. So the blue eyes come from Mesopotamia, which was near the Black Sea. And the Anunnaki bred with the Homo sapiens that they'd already created 200,000 years before. And then they actually physically bred with them uh, 200,000 years after they'd created them. And that gave us the pale skin in the Middle East with the blue eyes. So I don't know why people just make up crap instead of actually looking at the evidence, which we've got, by the way. Did you know you've been tricked by people changing the Bible? Look at this. At the beginning, God created the heavens. God created all these different Bibles, except for the Young's literal translation, which is literally the translation of it. In the beginning, God's preparing the heavens. Preparing God's plural. Did you know God taught the other Anunnaki for the first six days and then rested on the seventh? It's all here, the cuneiform origins of Genesis. You can go look this up. And basically what it says is on the seventh day, God completed his teaching and he ceased on the seventh day. The teaching had been that he had been doing then that basically means that the first six days the anunnaki were preparing the earth which it says in uh, the literal young's literal translation and that means that they were separating the waters from the waters in other words fresh waters from horrible water they were preparing fowl and that livestock all says it in the young's literal translation if you read the other bibles then you won't have a clue what i'm on about because they've all been changed so there you go, Anunnaki here, proof as always. Enki or Enlil, which one was the good or bad one? Well, I know it was Enki because I've read many, many, you know guys, that how long I've been doing this, 40 years. So anyway, this person's basically said, no, it was Enlil that was bad based on Ishmael Perez's uh, research. So I said, no problem at all, show me the evidence that Enki was bad and not Enlil. So this person then replied, easy. I'm like, no, seriously, I had to reply back saying, no, seriously, I'm asking for the evidence. Don't just say easy, because at this point, it looks like you don't have any, and obviously I do. Uh, so please show me the evidence that Enki was bad and Enlil was good. And once you've done that, I will show you a whole amount of evidence that Enki was good and Enlil was bad. So I'm waiting for your evidence and don't tell me to go and look at Ishmael Perez because you would have watched whatever or seen whatever he talked about and you can give me the direct evidence. Otherwise you just guessed and believed. This is funny. On a video I said I'm doing a family tree of the Anunnaki because the ones that's out there, some of them are kind of mixed up and things like that. So anyway, this person then wrote Yahweh is Enlil, the creator of Adam, which is so wrong. I've done a video on my Patreon page with evidence showing who Yahweh was and it wasn't Enlil. In fact, Yahweh, the name only is a few thousand years old compared to Adam, who would have been 100,000 years old, not Adamu which I'm guessing is what you're referring to when you say the creator of Adam, you're actually getting two mixed up from Adam to Adamu. But, uh, and Adamu was over in South Africa uh, 300,000 years ago. So anyway, either way, it wasn't Enlil, it was Enki that created the Adamu. So anyway, I, I asked for evidence of, from this person. Do you know what he done? He sent me one of those family trees that's online for the Anunnaki, which is the whole reason why I'm doing mine, because they get mixed up. And he's proved my point. So thank you. That's why people should look at my family tree of the Anunnaki.
morning star be the same being as Lucifer, whose name in Latin... I'd have a few problems with this because one, Lucifer was only ever mentioned once and that was in the 1978 New International Version. The actual original translation of the word was adversary and there was plenty of adversaries including serpents which were an anarchy people that didn't like the fact that Enki had children with humans that gave Adam and Eve. Anyway, uh, so that's the first problem. The second problem is uh, Lucifer, if you go by the New International Version or even the other versions that show it was an adversary, such as Young's literal translation, um, he it he died, basically, uh, not on a cross or anything. He came down, uh, had a chat with God, one of the gods, which was an anarchy, and lost a battle and was pushing up daisies. You know, God is a perfect and righteous judge. I do trust God. That gods have been proven to be the Anunnaki alien race called gods. Uh, go to my website, scroll down to where it says click here on the home page, and that's your evidence. But the funny thing is, this gentleman said about God being a judge, the actual Anunnaki, as written in their text that predate the Bible that the Bible copied from, the Anunnaki actually used seven judges. So when they had disputes amongst themselves, they actually would have a council of seven that would basically vote on the outcome of such a thing. So, for example, when Alula had a fight with King Yanu here on Earth um, and did something naughty, bit off a part of King Yanu, uh, the seven judges decided to listen to Enki, who said, send him to Mars to die. Fallen angels. This person's going to show us the evidence where the Anunnaki were fallen angels. Technically, they were Jijis, but I'm not going to split hairs on that. So I know where the evidence is. You all know that I know where the evidence is. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this person shows me the evidence is. Lots of people have asked me for a family tree of the Anunnaki. I know I've actually started it now and I will let everyone know when it's done. And I'm also breaking down who they were in other places with different names. Now I know there's a lot of family trees on the internet and you'll find that each one seems to have something slightly different from another. So with my knowledge, I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else, but I'm just saying that with my knowledge, I'm going to be creating my own family tree, which... Um, for me will be the definitive family tree as opposed to these other ones that all seem to have different things in them. So as soon as that's done, uh, keep following and I will let you know when it's finished. It won't be probably the end of the week. Thanks. One approach to investigating dowsing involves using instruments like night vision cameras, electromagnetic field, EMF detectors, or radio frequency, RF scanners, to see if there are any measurable changes in the environment when dowsing is being performed. However, these attempts have not provided conclusive evidence supporting the effectiveness of dowsing. This doesn't take into account that there are technological advances every year. Here are just some of the groundbreaking cameras that see way beyond the human range. Infrared cameras, developed since the mid-20th century for various applications, widely used in night vision and thermal imaging. Ultraviolet cameras, developed in the mid-20th century for scientific research and forensics, capturing ultraviolet light. X-ray cameras, developed in the late 19th century, widely used in medical imaging, security, and industrial inspection. Thermal imaging cameras, developed in the mid-20th century, used for heat detection and thermal imaging in various fields. FLIR cameras, forward-looking infrared, introduced in the 1960s, used for thermal imaging in military, industrial, and scientific applications. LIDAR cameras, LIDAR technology, light detection and ranging, has been in development since the 1960s, using laser light for measuring distances and creating high-resolution maps. What I'm trying to say is just because we can't see something today doesn't mean we won't be able to in the future. I know I've been mainly talking about the visual range for dowsing, but the same applies to all other senses we have and technologies that cover other frequencies. They evolve every year. As it stands, we can't quantify dowsing using technology. That doesn't mean it's not real. We couldn't quantify how bats flew almost blind until we invented sonar. Maybe dowsing is done by spirit guides helping us? Like the way we use a spirit board or Ouija board, the spirit uses our own energy to help it move the glass around the board. Maybe dowsing is the same? Maybe we won't ever see or trace an effect because the spirit uses our chi and aura. 
Qi or qi, in traditional Chinese culture, qi or qi refers to the vital life force or energy that flows through living beings. It is an important concept in various Chinese martial arts, traditional Chinese medicine and philosophy, aura. An aura refers to the distinctive atmosphere or energy field that surrounds a person, place or object. In metaphysical and spiritual contexts, it is believed that auras can reveal information about one's emotions, health and spiritual state. The problem with dousing is unless you do it yourself and get results, it's easy to be a skeptic. The same goes for ghosts. Until you've used a spirit board and seen the glass move to the correct answers, you can dismiss it. Let's see what skeptics say about how dousing works. Dousing, an ancient practice involving walking over a field with a Y-shaped twig or stick, known as a divining rod, to detect underground water, has been known to vary in effectiveness among individuals. Despite being widely regarded as pseudoscience, I personally find the concept of dousing plausible due to a hypothetical mechanism I have envisioned. This mechanism is based on the idea that humans have a natural predisposition to recognize certain landscape features, such as potential water sources. Drawing from psychological concepts like priming, where the brain becomes ready to notice expected events, I propose that thinking about water primes the mind to anticipate its presence. Stepping into an area where water is likely, this mental readiness could manifest as subtle movements or twitches in the fingers. Even if these This person wrote, so you haven't checked out the DNA that was left on the Shroud of Turin. So, in other words, Jesus' DNA. In order to know that it was Jesus' DNA, you'd need a controlled sample of that. In other words, someone would need to go back in time, grab a sample of that, and then say that that was Jesus. Otherwise, it could be absolutely anybody's, unfortunately. I know you want it to be Jesus, but... And then you also wrote... And also the Holy Grail, the blood that Jesus left. Again, <laughs> um, if you could prove to me that it was Jesus's, and that still doesn't negate the fact that Jesus possibly was a real character. I've done the video on who Jesus' real father was. You won't be able to debunk it. It's on YouTube. You go, go watch it. No one will because it's got evidence. So when I'm saying uh, about what I say, I'm not saying that Jesus wasn't a real character, even though it was a hybrid and anarchy. So that still means I'm right. Sorry. Someone posted this on one of my videos. They did find the blood of Jesus on the shroud. Now, in order to know, I've already done a video on this before, but in order for you to know that it's Jesus's blood and not anyone else's whatsoever, you would actually need to have what they call a control blood sample, which means you would actually have to have more than likely Jesus in front of you or a signed affidavit saying that it was definitely Jesus's blood that you've got the control of so then when you look at the shroud the blood on the shroud you can say yes it's a match otherwise you've just got blood <laughs> i don't know if you can grasp that or not regardless of what type of blood it is all you have is blood you need to be able to connect it to a particular character and you've got no control you've got no dna no nothing whatsoever of jesus so you need to have that control sorry it's just the way the world works wow this person's going to look a bit silly at the end of this video uh so basically this person said that i'm book wise and zachariah sitchin's book has made me blind unfortunately i have done a documentary three-hour documentary where i used evidence not from zachariah sitchin i used it from the original text museums etc etc and that is the video that no one's debunked no one will ever do because it's got evidence so where you're saying that i'm copying sitchin go watch that video it's on my website ourtruehistory.co.uk scroll down to where it says click here and you'll see i actually say on the video i'm not using zachariah sitchin so i go to other sources so unfortunately, one of us, I'm not going to mention any names, either you or me, has now made the other one look a little bit silly. Leeds Colnan claimed to have discovered the secrets of the ancient Egyptians and believed he understood the construction techniques used to build the pyramids. He allegedly moved the massive coral stones, some weighing several tons, using simple tools and a mysterious method that he kept secret. Witnesses reported seeing him use hand tools, winches, and a tripod to lift and move the stones. 
There are reports and stories suggesting that witnesses claim to see Leedskalnin move stones with his hands, as if he had the ability to levitate them. These claims are often anecdotal and lack scientific verification. Leedskalnin was notoriously secretive about his construction methods, working at night and away from the public eye. This secrecy fueled speculation and myths about his abilities, including the idea that he had rediscovered ancient anti-gravity or levitation techniques. Some people suggested that Leedskalnin had knowledge of electromagnetic or sound wave technologies that allowed him to manipulate the stones. Mainstream will have you believe that Edward built the castle using normal techniques, such as basic principles of leverage, counterweights, and simple machines to move the massive stones. However, in 1986, when the gate malfunctioned, it took six men and a crane to remove and reinstall the nine-ton gate that Ed had originally installed by himself. During the repair, it was revealed that Ed had used a metal shaft placed in a hole drilled through the stone, strategically positioned to perfectly balance the gate. This shaft was supported by a truck bearing. The reason behind the gate's breakage was simply the rusting of the bearing. After replacing the bearing and shaft, it required further repairs in 2005. Nevertheless, the gate is no longer as effortlessly movable as it once was. This means a team of experts couldn't fix a door that a single man created. Mainstream won't tell you this. So how did Ed achieve this feat? Ed believed that the vital force in the universe to create the idea of certain kinds of human-animal hybrids this research is referring to mermaids as being hybridized people, humans. However, I did a documentary, and so far, all my documentaries, no one's ever debunked. I'm the one that's told you where Atlantis is. I'm the one that's told you who Jesus' father was, who Yahweh's real name was, as an Anunnaki, etc., etc. Um, and yes, I have done one on mermaids. And with the way I research, it's second to none. And you will find the Anunnaki were mermaids, not humans. Um, and that's all backed up with evidence. So if anyone's interested, it's actually on my Patreon page, that that documentary, patreon.com forward slash our true history. So it's up to you. Either go by the evidence that this Anunnaki told us and showed us, yes, carvings of mermaids with Anunnaki's. There seems to be a lot of weird people today saying things that actually have no evidence whatsoever. Anyway, this person said that Inky and Enlil were not real. And I double-checked that. I said, are you saying that Enlil and Inky were just planets, as you said in the first comment? And they wrote back saying, yeah. So in other words, this character here that's Enki, carved from the ancient times, was actually a planet. And so was this carving here in a museum i think it's in iraq yes it's iraq's museum and then also enki the planet uh so in these ancient texts here it says kissed her this is talking about uh, a woman as you can probably tell and then poured his you know what into her womb so i'm asking this person how do you explain two million ancient tablets talking about enki as a real character when you say that it was just a planet and it goes on there's loads of things about inky creating humans etc uh you'll be put into a system where you are essentially this is alex collier a few people's asked me my thoughts on him and i've said before some he gets right some things he gets wrong on this occasion he's got something slightly wrong so he's referring to the reincarnation cycle of a human and he says that you go back round and reincarnate you don't you don't have a soul it's an entity that joins with you and the reason why he's slightly wrong is because if you had a soul and you went round and reincarnated into someone else that means that person doesn't have a soul or that person now has two souls and then when they die three souls into the next person before you know it, millions of souls so if you watch his video, he's correct about the soul group and everything else. But like I said, some things he gets right, some things he gets wrong. So we don't have a soul. It's an entity that joins with us. If anyone's following me, please read this because it's basically a person saying that if I did a video about Ishmael Perez, uh, all my followers would leave because they'll show it. Show the video will show that I'm wrong, even though it actually doesn't. It shows Ishmael Perez is wrong. So I did a video that's previous to this one, if you're interested. It's 10 minutes long because obviously there was a lot of errors in Ishmael Perez's videos. So basically, 
if you feel I'm wrong, obviously my followers would let me know and tell me, you know, show me evidence when my evidence is wrong. The problem with this is this person was quoting a lot of Ishmael's stuff and I kept asking for evidence and of course this person couldn't give me any evidence and just kept telling me go watch Ishmael, which I did and then I end up finding loads of errors with Ishmael and, and me using my evidence, I, I prove them wrong. But all I'm saying is please stop. No one asked me to watch other people's videos because if I find errors i will end up doing videos so just follow and learn this is ismail perez apparently and i've been told that uh by just two people in fact that his research is correct and mine's wrong so i thought i'd have a look at his videos and of course i didn't get very far without finding errors so i thought I'd, instead of doing a long one which i will do uh his video is an hour and 20 so i'll probably end up debunking pretty much everything that he says but Let's just go through um, some of the things now. You know, everybody in our community, when it comes to the subject matter of the Anunnaki, everybody in our community is gearing towards Enki is the good guy and Enlil is the bad guy. That's So basically, <laughs> that's correct, because here is the translations of the tablets where Enki created the very first Homo sapien, and there was about six that ended up with deformities before they managed to get the correct one and including a woman by the way so um <laughs> yeah anyway so basically here it shows that no matter how bad the description look weak hands um a man with broken paralyzed feet he gave him bread basically he could have just let them die so when you start reading out what he did for these people um he even gave them jobs as well in the palaces, the one of them are the ones that could still work, available to work. Uh, so basically, yeah, compared to uh, the other Anunnaki's, which I'll go through in a sec, en Enki was actually quite nice, and com certainly compared to Enlil. Um, now, let's have a listen to what he carries on saying. It's like 90% of our community, all right? Those are the people that are just buying the net narrative without... <laughs> yes, because it's if you actually read more than what you're just about to quote, he's going to quote one reference here or one book fully questioning uh the fact that perhaps these ancient records could have been messed with by the luciferian forces right that took over the affairs of our world so so basically what he's saying is these tablets here now i don't know about you i can't control alt and delete on these tablets so he's saying that they could have been changed in the mud two million of these particular clay tablets that we keep digging up now have been changed, reburied. Yeah, you get my point. <laughs> so this guy's not as good as the other people seem to have said he was. Sorry to the guy if you're actually watching this. It's not my fault. This is what I do. I, I'm, yeah, sorry. I would like to start off by uh, reading a summary of one of the tablets called the, the Adra Hasis. So basically he uses that one there. And then says that we all go by that one tablet. The epic of the Arad Hasis. Okay, so this is according to what everybody in our community is basing their so-called facts regarding the Anunnaki. No, it's not. Uh, well, not me anyway, uh, because as I just pointed out here, I use different translations from various different sources. If you watched any of my videos, you'd know that. Um, so, for example... Here is um, some translations called the Flood Story, which we all know what that is. This is the um, one of the tablets they've got. This is translations in the Oxford University website. Side wall standing at my side. Side wall, I will speak the words to you. Basically, he's telling Enki, the nice one, he's telling Noah, or Zazudra as he was called back then, to build an ark. So we've actually got the other version of that um, with the... Ivan Finkel, I'm just trying to find it now. Oh, there he is. So here, Ivan Finkel's got the actual, another tablet. So I don't go by, even though the Artrahasis talks about it, we've now got the Artrahasis, this tablet that this gentleman's got in the British Museum, and the other one that I've just translated, plus obviously the Epic of Gilgamesh, etc. And if you look down there, Enki is the one he's referring to that tells Noah. So it's basically that same story. So Enki's pretty good in my opinion, he's actually telling us, tell, saving us, really, to be honest with you. Um, 
And here in the um, Archahasas, uh, basically they're telling that they have to create a flood. And Enki says um, they're, they're basically forcing Enki, let us make far sighted Enki swear because Enki wanted to save us. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Now, I must just say the reason Ishmael Perez that I'm doing this video is because this gentleman here kept having a go at me even though he had no evidence. So I'm, I'm not sure where you give your evidence from, but I kept asking him for evidence for the things he was saying, and he had none whatsoever, including, which we'll go through in a sec, some of the other bits you say. So there's another bit here where uh, Enki saves Inanna, where no one else bothered, and Lil didn't bother. So there's another bit there, just showing you that Enki does have a heart. So let's have a look what you've got to say for yourself on this section. From their union, the younger gods were born, and they became a noisy and unruly bunch. Apsu dis He's having to read. I mean, clearly, I, you guys know what I'm like. I can do a five-hour live chat without him to read anything, but anyway. Stirred by the noise, plotted to eliminate the younger gods. However, one of the gods, Ea, which, of course, later to other translations, according to other translations, right, for those that understand the Greek mythology, according to the mythology, so just to let him know, just in case he's interested, uh, Ea was actually the original name for Enki because En is Lord and Ki is Earth. So he got given that name. So there's no way he would have had that name before he even came to Earth. So Ea was his actual name. Now, if you go back and look at many of the tablets, you'll see that is the case. So that's another one that is... Bred by post sought a champion martyr, the god of Babylon, stepped forward and offered to face Tiamat. In a... So here he's reading the... Um, Sounds like he's now reading uh, a bit from the Enum release, but anyway, so here it's basically Marduk is telling um, the story that he destroyed a planet. Now, I don't know if this Ishmael knows it's a planet that we're referring to here with Tiamat, but anyway, um, let's have a Karen listen. In exchange for being declared the Supreme God, hence the Supreme God. So basically, Marduk destroys Tiamat and becomes the Supreme God. Think about it. There was some sort of a consolidation from polytheism into monotheism. So just a little advert time here, because I am the guy that worked out who Yahweh really was. It's on my Patreon page, this video here, documentary, 20 minutes long. And you'll work out as you watch this with the evidence, I will show evidence, that uh, what he's saying there, you don't have to guess because I give you the evidence for it. He obviously doesn't have that evidence. I guess I'm the only person that's ever worked that out, so it's not his fault. So let's have a look at what he says here. Brett posed by Tiamat Saudi champion, Marduk, right? This is according to these tablets, guys, to prove that Marduk, hence Belial Ball, right? Belial Ball who is what? He's one of the fallen entities. He's one. So Bel, Bel Marduk is another name for Mark, but he obviously doesn't know that. But I cover that in my, my uh, Patreon video on who Yahweh was. One of these, you know, draconian reptilians that have been running the show. So he said that Marduk is a draconian reptilian. So let's have a look at what Marduk looks like. Yes, look at that forked tongue. Wow, look at all those scowls on him. Let's have a look at another. This is just obviously a cylinder seal. It's only a few inches high. Um, and here's another carving of Marduk. Obviously, this is in stone, so it's difficult to see. But you can get the idea that it's not too dissimilar from his father, who looks like this. Now, there is no scowls on these uh, Anunnaki's whatsoever. Now, if you actually look at what the Anunnaki carvings are like, they're immaculate and brilliant, but they don't have scowls or they don't have any lizard features whatsoever. So I have done many a video asking people to show me evidence that there were lizards or reptilians or anything like that. And of course, no one ever comes back. So Ishmael, if you are listening, please, please, and don't show me those two squashed figurines for crying out loud. Don't do that. That would be embarrassing. So obviously we've got thousands of these type of carvings for all the Anunnaki's, but there is two squashed, I didn't, didn't bother doing showing those, but there's two squashed ones that um, David Icke said were reptilian, and therefore the whole of the Anunnaki were reptilian. Bear in mind, we are the offspring off of Anunnaki. I've already showed you that a second ago, um, in their image. So as far as I'm aware, I'm not a reptilian either. So if you can show me anything other than the two squashed carvings, now bear in mind, we do have thousands of these that show what they actually really look like. Um, 
so I don't know. I, it's blame this guy. Don't don't blame me. Blame the TikTok guy. Um, because I normally try and I always say, are you sure you want me to watch this guy's videos? I said this to him because I will find things wrong. It's not your fault. It's now it's his. I said, I will find things wrong. I can't help it. I will do a video. I've done it to Billy. I've done it to other researchers. It's, it's not what I want to do. So don't pe people don't tell me to watch someone else's video because I will find errors and I'll point them out. So anyway, sorry. It's not. This is a follow up to the Ishmael Perez video where this. I won't say numpty. Oh, damn, I just did. Uh, Rocco has basically was saying that Ishmael Perez knows more than me. I'm stupid, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, then I went through and done a 10-minute video where pretty much everything that Ishmael says I prove wrong. So, anyway, finally, Rocco's now finally watched that video where I prove Ishmael wrong. And he's wrote, wonder why you cut it so quickly. Well, it was 10 minutes, and once he said what he needed to say, I stopped it and then said my piece so i don't know where you're going with that and then you were and yes you are using tablet what what tampered i'm guessing what was tampered with by thoth so uh this person i keep asking for evidence for things so show me the evidence that thoth tampered with the many tablets for the whole 10 minutes video that i done when you realize you can't which this person's just causing me problems or not numpty Sorry, wasn't going to do a follow-up, but someone said that they're really interested in finding out where it ends. So this gentleman said that I copy Sakurai Sitchin's work about the Anunnaki aliens that created us humans. And I said, actually, no, I don't. I go by other evidence, and then I proved that by offering him a link to a video that shows where I get all my information from, and it's not from Sakurai Sitchin. And I sort of basically in that video said, I'll probably make you look silly, but if you want to go down that road, let's let's dance. You put the coin in, I'll play the jukebox. Anyway, so that person then wrote back saying, I'm not silly. Um, and then wrote that I'm now working for Deep State because I'm talking about aliens and he got obviously got upset. So this is the follow-up <laughs> uh, video of this person telling me now because he obviously... Couldn't, couldn't de defeat me on the... Oh, I don't know. I'll just give up. So, yeah. Hopefully it ends now. This will amaze you. The BBC's literally admitted the Anunnaki were here and taught us in ancient times. Now, look at this. Arguably the most interesting, most sophisticated mathematical document from the ancient world. It tells us that past civilizations understood mathematics a lot better than we thought. So he goes on to say that the... Uh, Anunnaki, and I say Anunnaki because if you have a look here and then look at Enki, you'll see that uh, the only the main Anunnaki got actually carved. There was no point in carving, you know, Joe Blogs from down the road. So this they actually animate an Anunnaki. Uh, they have different hats, which tells you who they are. So Enki's got the turban style one. Um, I'm not quite sure who this one is. Could have been Nuggle or someone like that, but. Basically, uh, they knew Pyagra theorem before, obviously, Pyagra went there and learnt it. So, yeah, Anunnaki taught us with evidence. This lovely person keeps telling me to go and read stuff. Um, and no matter how many times I say to them, look, please, I've, I've done that, been there, got the T-shirt. In fact, the Book of Enoch, I've actually lectured on and found things that no one else has found in the Book of Enoch. And I can show you evidence of that. In fact... Go to my website, altruhistory.co.uk, scroll down to where it says click here, there's evidence. Now, I've also told you to go there, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, and no one bothers, no one goes to see the evidence, because they just keep coming out with this regurgitating, as if I don't know what I'm talking about stuff. Also, the fallen ones were the Ajiji, the sons of the Anunnaki, which also translates into uh, Watchers in the Sky. There's a few other names for the translation, but that's what the Ajiji are. So please, stop trying because you've been chatting backwards and forwards for, for um, over a month please just watch my videos it's easier and you won't be lied to i'm a demon according to this person who i asked for evidence of the things that this person was saying obviously they could never come back with evidence because they don't have any and i was asking them to go and watch my evidence which they didn't as usual same old story so they called me a demon. <laughs> anyway, they also said that uh, my followers, which hopefully you guys are that's watching this, that there's seven archangels. Now, this person obviously doesn't understand an angel. 
uh, it means messenger, if you go and look up the, even follow my videos or whatever, anyway, and an archangel is a pilot or, or a leader of those that fly the chariots, as written in uh, Book of Enoch, etc. So, my followers, we've been distracted by Satan, who, actually, if you watch my long documentary on who Satan was, you'll find out he's just another adversary for one of the Anunnaki. So, I don't know, this person just keeps, but please, enough now, you've you've basically been destroyed, you did, couldn't answer any of my questions, and you didn't give any. I think I know why Stonehenge was placed exactly where it was, and that's one of the biggest secrets in the world, as to why there, because there's no settlements, etc. A few burial grounds, but that's about it, and obviously if people die being near there, then chances are they're not going to drag their bodies back to wherever they come from. But I think I've worked it out. Now, I'm the guy that's worked out where Atlantis was, etc. So there's a possibility that I might be right. So keep watching and I'll let you know when I've done it. After the flood, the Anunnaki divided the territories up into four. So the first one was Sumer. And that is in the Middle East, as you can see right here in what well, used to be called Mesopotamia, and there's the Tigris and Euphrates. So in Suma was the first place that the Anunnaki decided to teach us humans things. And some of the things that they've taught us, which pretty much is everything, writings, mathematics, uh, urbanisation, agriculture, legal systems, the list just goes on and on. But what's interesting is that was run by Enlil, which means the chances are Enlil's own language, original language, which would have been what we call Sumerian. In other words, that would be more than likely the Anunnaki's own language. It's an alien language. That's uh, fascinating. So watch the next video and I'll carry on with another of the four territories. The second place that the Anunnaki gave was Egypt, and that was given to Enki. And now Enki didn't really want to deal with that, so he let his son Marduk have Egypt and now Marduk held on to that until uh, Atlantis which was where Thoth was I've watched my pinned videos I show evidence that Atlantis was here uh, so Marduk had to flee and but before he fled he had children so the whole of Egypt was actually his originally and then his children and their, their children's children which got down to Osiris etc split the territories into two upper and lower um, but as Marduk done a runner, because Inanna was after him, um, Inanna warned Thoth that uh, she was going to sink the city because she thought Marduk might be there. They sink Atlantis, watch my pin video, and then Thoth ended up being in control of Egypt for a period of time. I have named God, just like I named who Jesus' real father is. That video is on YouTube and website and TikTok, etc. No one's told me I'm wrong with evidence. And now I have done it again. I have named who Yahweh is. In fact, I even tell you who El is. And I even tell you that Asha is not Yahweh's wife based on evidence. So if you know who I am, I am the guy that does everything with evidence. It's a 20 minute video. It's literally just been released on my Patreon page. And also on my Patreon page, if you go to collections, I've put all the videos now. You can do it without the collections, but I've now put them all in categories um there's over over a hundred and something odd videos um as you see just the list just goes on spirits and stuff so yeah um if you're interested in any of these things with evidence as always feel free to visit my patreon page or my website outruehistory.co.uk the third territory to be broken up from the anunnaki was given to inanna so inanna was her now, she was given the Indus Valley in India. Now, you'll see that Kali in India was also the same person as Ishtar and Inanna. And you'll find that she does actually hold heads in and stand on people or stand on lions as Inanna and also Ishtar. You'll see them in cylinder seals. So there was a time in Indian history that it was called the Kali Yaga. And basically what that means is that the... The Indians had four time periods of different people being in charge, and Kali was one of those periods. So basically, the Lost Book of Enki does explain that out of the four territories, Inanna did get the Indus Valley, which makes perfect sense as she is Kali.
The third territory to be broken up from the Anunnaki was given to Inanna. So Inanna was her. Now, she was given the Indus Valley in India. Now, you'll see that Kali in India was also the same person as Ishtar and Inanna. And you'll find that she does actually hold heads in and stand on people or stand on lions as Inanna and also Ishtar. You'll see them in cylinder seals. So there was a time in Indian history that it was called the Kali Yaga. And basically what that means is that the the Indians had four time periods of different people being in charge and Kali was one of those periods. So basically the Lost Book of Enki does explain that out of the four territories Inanna did get the Indus Valley which makes perfect sense as she is Kali. The last and fourth place that the Anunnaki split their territories up was given to the remaining uh, Anunnaki gods as a collective. However, I don't actually know where that is. I've got some ideas, but I don't actually know. Yes, our true history admits when he doesn't know something. So uh, it could be Turkey, it could be uh, Israel, it could be anywhere. I'm not 100% sure. I've got my ideas. but So in other words, if someone knows where they think the fourth territory was, please let me know. Because I still learn, and yes, I am humble enough to say I don't know something. So sorry, I can't tell you where the fourth place is without evidence, but um, if you know it, please let me know. Thank you. Welcome to this pinned video. This is about what I do and why my research is pretty much second to none without sounding big-headed. I have to advertise myself, so forgive me if some stuff does sound big-headed. Uh, so you've probably come here because you may have watched some videos and thought, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. Let's see what his pinned videos are. So I'm explaining in the pin, this pinned video about what I do and how I get to the research, etc. So on my homepage of ourtruehistory.co.uk, you can scroll down and you'll see just some of the things that I'm the only person that's worked out with evidence. I always show evidence. And some of these things no one else has ever come close to. Um, you can just read it yourself and on the home page of the website. Now if you carry on scrolling down, it says click here to watch a 34 minute documentary called The Lost Book of Our True History. Now that video, 34 minutes, is part of a longer, hours long version, which I'll get to in a sec. But the 34 minutes sh proves absolutely proves because there's tens of thousands of people that's watched it on tiktok not one person said it's wrong let alone try to give evidence uh where my evidence is wrong so basically it proves that the bible talks about the anunnaki uh which was an alien race that came here and genetically genetically modified us so if you're interested in seeing the evidence it's on my website ourtruehistory.co.uk uh, so basically, if you go back up to the top, you'll see categories, video categories. Here, um, you will get to see sets of five or sets of 50. So the TikTok videos that I do, I've put in sets of five or sets of 50 on YouTube. So you can just click here and watch them direct from the website or on YouTube. So let's just say sets of 50. So here you will have 1 to 50, 51 to 100 and so on. So there's people that have literally binge watched them all day long and watched them off of that instead of, um, you know, scrolling through a thousand odd videos as you see there. I can't put my phone there. These are just genuine people that's actually said, kept me up all night. So like I say, you can watch the videos in sets of five if you just want uh, sort of a five minute fix. If you want 50 plus minutes, then click on that one. Now, you can actually type in at the top here exactly what you're looking for. So, for example, you might be interested in mermaids, giants, ghosts, um, Jesus, for example. So I've done the video, yes, I'm the guy that actually said who Jesus' real father was. Again, zero people's told me I'm wrong, let alone with evidence. And, of course, I show evidence. So once you're into this, uh, type in what you want. Just look for, for the video that you're after. So this one's Anunnaki. All these videos here for Anunnaki, Egypt, and so on, until you get to uh, Jesus. It's not in alphabetical order, I'm afraid. Uh, there we are, Jesus. Uh, who Jesus' real father was. There we are, it's on YouTube. So you just click there, and you can watch that video, and so on. Bigfoot, Stonehenge. 
So that's the uh, video se- section of it. Podcasts. So when I do my live chats, I put them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc., which you can get to under our true history. But if you don't have any of those um, podcast players, you just scroll all the way to the bottom. And I've actually made it nice and easy that you can actually just listen to it from the website. So you get to see hear all these live chats. And some of them are with guests, as you see, live debate there about international uh, inter- interdimensional beings, um, a heated debate. <laughs> uh atlantis that was after i'd found where atlantis was and again that's all on my videos like i say this is why people follow me because i do show evidence and i'm pretty much the only person that ever does this kind of research uh so you can see there's there's a brilliant one here with rh negative guest uh this means this person knows pretty much everything there is to know about rh negative blood and where it came from so you will love that live chat so they're on there, and uh, we'll just go to links because if you're interested in books or websites that I trust, because I only go by evidence, which is you know unusual for some researchers, but I do. Uh, I give where I think books or you know um, information or websites, video links to things that I think are genuine or as close as genuine as possible. So that's pretty good on there. Uh, obviously, contact me. You can do that through TikTok as well. Uh, so I have a Patreon page. Now, I do documentaries. So the documentaries that I was referring to, for example, uh, Jesus is Father and stuff, sometimes I put them on YouTube and my website. Sometimes I put them on my Patreon page. And that's because, obviously, I spend a lot of time doing the research so for example i'll just go through some of these now that's on my patreon page it's only two uh what 299 for a month and there's over 100 odd videos there and there's an audio book or two audio books and so on but let me just give you an example of how good these videos are so here is part three it's literally just been put up just now as you see just before i start this video and part three is the garden of eden adam and eve so this part talks about lilith and i prove that lilith did not know adam prove that with evidence as usual and then i also in the same video go on to show where eden was again with evidence unlike other people that just sort of guess part two of the same video so i'm going down here uh shows that adam and eve was on a spaceship for the first 24 years of their life and that's with evidence as i say everything i do is with evidence and then uh this one here is a part uh chapter one from a new book so as I say, there's going to be three audio books on there, all for the price of two ninety nine. And I release videos every week on my Patreon page, as well as TikTok. But these ones are long documentaries, as you see, the the lengths of them: fifty minutes, eleven minutes. Uh, that one's just a trailer, and so on. That one's fifteen minutes, and this is um, part three. So there's an hour long version, in other words, uh, for this Crystal Skulls, where I prove that we've been lied to by mainstream. So, as you see, everything's with evidence, and I prove that um, the Crystal Skulls are exactly what we believe they are, which was uh, unusually made by a... Well, I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, So I did a documentary on uh, which videos I think are real in terms of alien spaceships that's been filmed. Another audio book part there. There's the first part of that. Um, another audio book there. Part, see, this is why it's well worth the £2.99. Uh, Billy Meyer, I did videos proving, yes, I'm the only one that's done it, showed. Now, people have proved that he's wrong and lied, but I actually showed something that no one else has seen, um, which bang to rights basically made a model, and I show that, I prove that. So as, There's no point in me making up stuff, otherwise you guys would just laugh at me um audio book there's so many videos as i say as well as the audio book um can't remember oh that one is just a link actually to uh, a really good 1970s program um it's on youtube you can go watch that one yourself uh audio books mexican aliens i prove that the mexican aliens which we all know are real aliens these are the mummified ones um There's another live chat there, Um, audio book, 
another live chat. See, this is why it's well worth the money. Easter Island, I show who and when these statues were put there. Again, with evidence, unlike other people. Live chat. Uh, the list just goes on. Who Satan really was. I mean, seriously, with, with evidence, you'll be blown away. Um, and then part two of that was the Book of Revelation. So basically, I proved that the Anunnaki were the ones talking you know, that's been copied in the Book of Revelation. In fact, I'm also the person that worked out that the trumpet in the ancient text actually means missile or rocket. I've, I'm I'm pretty much the first to come out with many things, and once you reread things, you'll see. And, of course, I show the evidence, so um, I'm just trying to go through this as quick as, quick as possible. Uh, like I say, long documentaries here, as well as the audio books. Uh, dinosaurs live with humans. I show evidence of that. Obviously, we know that they didn't all die out 65 million years ago. Uh, I debate with AI, and obviously I win because it lies. Who Jesus' real father is is here as well. It's on YouTube if you're interested. Uh, the Lost Book of Our True History. That's that one I was telling you about. That uh, is on my website, Stroke YouTube, for 34 minutes. But the longer version. Look at this. 31 minutes, 37 minutes, uh, 12 minutes, 18 minutes. It's long, hours long uh, of that showing evidence. And the list just goes on and on. As you see, I'm running out of time now. But the list, what Sumerian stuff means, it's, it's a wealth of information all backed up by evidence. So that's on my patreon.com, Our True History. So hopefully I see you on my website or TikTok or on Patreon. They were enslaved. They did two things. They installed a worship gene in the human genome. When this gene is turned... But he's talking about the Anunnaki who created us humans from Neanderthal using their DNA. And he's saying that they also added a worship gene. Now, the problem with that is there was only 300 uh, Ijiji over in the Abzu, which is where the mining was, which is where they used us humans to mine. And there was only one main uh, Anunnaki there, which was Enki. So for them to have a worship gene instead of actually just getting on with the work for their planet that's dying just seems absolutely logical because the worship gene, there was only one god. It wasn't like there was all the other gods there, you know, Enlil and Nenharsag and people like that. So the logic just isn't there. You know, they they made us to mine, not to worship. The word God in the Bible, for example, is mistranslated. There should be an S on the end of every word that says God. I have a problem with that. Although I do agree that there were gods and the word Elohim is plural, there were times that the Bible was actually writing about a single god. So you can't add the S on every single time that one god is talking about other gods and says that, you know, you should follow me or whatever because I'm a god and don't trust the other gods. You can't have don't follow gods, me, because of the other gods, plural. So you can't do that. Um, so, for example, Yahweh who was not Enlil, I've done some amazing research on that and, and proved that with evidence. If you want to see it, let me know. Um, so uh, Yahweh at times would be referring to himself as God. So you can't have him saying gods when he's really just referring to himself. Now, he was one of the Anunnaki, but wasn't Enlil. So although Billy's correct in terms that Elohim is plural, sometimes God is just one that they're referring Dragons were real, and if you have a listen to this, you'll find out that it was Nibiru, a Nibiru, a monstrous beast from the heavenly depths, Sutha. The celestial battle resulted in the creation of a monster that once belonged to Tiamat's host. It awakened from its slumber in the depths of the cosmos when Nibiru alarmed it. It extended from the horizon to the middle of heaven, like a blazing dragon with a head of one league, a body of 50 leagues and a massive tail. So basically dragons were comets or anything with a tail in space. Now what the, so basically this is the Chinese dragon as you can probably now gather that's where the Chinese dragons got it from. And what you just heard there was uh, translations from the Lichtenstein collection of the Morhen tablets Babylonian which predate the Bible, obviously. So that was the original word for dragon.
The Anunnaki were dark-skinned and they created us, the first Homo sapiens. Now, have a listen to all the way to the very end. It's really important, otherwise you'll miss the whole point. So this is a tablet that's in the Liechtenstein. It ended up being in Columbia University, one of 14 that's owned by the Rothschilds. Uh, ended up being translated by Morhen. Now, let's have a listen to the Anunnaki as they've just created the very first human or Homo sapien on Earth. His hair on his head was jet black and tame. His skin was as smooth as that of the Anunnaki. The soil of the Abzu was similar in hue to dark crimson blood. Hmm, so, hmm. I, well, at least, he's, at least he's not got scowls like the Anunnaki. Hang on a minute, smooth. Hmm, okay. Now let's listen to what they say about the first female that they created. Her eyes were healthy, and her ears were as well. Her arms and legs were well formed, with parts that looked like legs and parts that looked like hands. She didn't shake, and her hair was sandy. Ninmar held the young woman in her hands. She whacked her buttocks, and the baby made lovely sounds. Her skin was as immaculate and colourless as that of the Anunnaki. She as colourless as the Anunnaki. They were white. Otherwise, they would have said the same about uh, the first boy. So the Anunnaki were pale-skinned. As we've always said, that's the evidence. Colourless. Uh, whereas they did describe the first Homo sapien as red hue as the clay. So we have all the evidence we ever need. So basically, if you want to know, the first Homo sapien was dark-skinned. The second was pale, which was the female and the Anunnaki were uh, pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair, which is why we have that same image of God. So please, no more saying, because I've asked for evidence that, that he's dark, they're dark skinned and no one ever gives it to me. That's That rules it out. Now that's the end of it. We've got the actual tablets. Thank you very much. What does it matter if the Anunnaki were pale skin or black skin? Uh, that's what I've been asked. And you've got to remember, people tell me that they're black. So some people seem to want them to be black and ask for evidence they can't provide it, which is why I did in my previous video that they were pale skinned. Now, the Anunnaki created the first Homo sapiens in the Abzu. This is what they look like. See my previous video for the skin colour. These characters couldn't talk. They didn't have the vocabulary and they wasn't hugely smart. Uh, it wasn't until the Anunnaki bred with those Homo sapiens which created the Homo sapiens sapiens. And they did that in, yes, guess where the Anunnaki was, exactly. Now, mainstream will give you stupid ideas like, oh, there was a deficiency in vitamin D, that's why there was white skin. But when you read tablets like this, which is the Adapa story, you'll realise that the Anunnaki bred with the darker skinned people. And that's why we end up in the Middle East with pale skin. And obviously their offspring were smarter. Now they may have been uh, white, olive or dark skin, but that's where we got Homo sapiens sapiens. Good news for my Patreon followers or those that might want to be a Patreon follower. So up here on patreon.com forward slash outro history, there's a button that says collections. I've now put all the videos in these collection so you can see all the mermaids all the and these are the long documentaries these ain't the tiktok ones these are the ones where you find out things that you'll never know and find out from anywhere else because the way i research and as you know i'm if you're watching this you must know how what i do <laughs> how good i am uh, in fact the video that's about to be released i release one every week and the one that's just about to be released this week is who yahweh was i was the guy that worked out who jesus is and so on Oh, so many things I've done. Uh, and this time I've actually worked out with evidence who Yahweh was. So I am really looking forward to that. And these are long videos, like I say. Um, you know, there's <laughs> Spirits 1 is three hours long. Um, Bigfoot, all sorts of things. So yeah, Patreon.